the uh, the track is amazing. I, I I'm uh, can't believe how much grip it has. It, it is also a little bit forgiving. I've got uh, got the car sideways a couple of times. It doesn't seem as treacherous as some of the other repaves, and I think it. Uh, you know, obviously the speeds are going to be huge, and hopefully we can race. Hopefully there's a you know a couple lanes, uh, and we can get too wide and and run at this speed. So. Our fast and all fusion is pretty good. We stayed in race trim the whole first practice, and uh, I, we'll, we'll go to qualifying trim here um, this afternoon. And yeah, I think qualifying is going to be really important um, j just because the speeds might be really, you know, really high. Lane will be uh, narrow. The groove will be narrow, and it, and it could be, at least for the first part of the race, really important to have good track position. So hopefully we can have a good effort. But this track is, is important to us for a number of reasons. And uh, t this morning I was over at... Uh, at, uh, at the Kellogg Company at their world headquarters in Battle Creek, and that was that was a lot of fun. Got to meet a lot of them. Roush, Roush Industries is right here. Ford's right here. So this is a huge pride for us to run well here. Great. Thank you, Carl. We'll take questions now from Reed and then go to Monty. I'm sorry, Monty. Reed Spencer with NASCAR Wire Service. Um, are you having any, any tire issues and um, any concerns about that? I don't think we've had any tire issues. Have other people had some yeah, tires? Yeah, blistering and stuff like that. Uh, okay. Yeah, we haven't had any. So um, did, how many laps was there after long run or something, or what did they? Yeah, which, sure before they went through a full heat cycle. And, and which tire was it, do you know? Uh, left front. Yeah. We haven't had that trouble. Hopefully we don't. We do not need tire issues right now. Monty? Monty Dutton, uh, Gas and Gazette. Carl, in the Nationwide Series, with Plate Zone, there's a lot of talk that – they're going to be tandem drafting, drafting. They're running up wide open all the way around the track. But Are yet, they able to run multiple laps like that, just keep running wide open? Do you know? Well, we had a press conference earlier, and I, I, I'm not sure if all day in race conditions with these guys, but the fact is they've been practicing. Right. But if you say you're doing a tandem draft, and yet you look out there and no one is doing it, and if you say you're going to draft down the straightaways here, but you watch practice, and why would you not experiment in, right now and see what you're going to do? Well, that's I mean that's a lot of ifs there. I don't know if I would be planning on tandem drafting here, but I haven't driven one of those cars. Um, if the groove in the corner is not wide enough to spread out and get a little fresh air, I don't think you'll see a lot of that because it'd be you, you'd run in the corner nose to tail. The guy behind would have a huge disadvantage arrow wise. He'd slow up. But it, I, I imagine if you could time it perfectly and you had enough room to to move too wide in the corner a little bit and then tuck in down the straightaway, two guys could maybe work together and and run off. But they they would. I guess now would be the time to be practicing that. That that seems pretty treacherous for the race, and it really I think it really depends on the the groove in the corners if it's wide enough. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I don't know. That that'll be interesting to watch. So they're you think they're wide open, um, just lap after lap out there? That's what they said. Man. It's gonna be really hot. Uh, tomorrow too, right? It's uh, supposed to be real hot, and sunny. So, hmm. that'll be. I'll be watching. Let's go, Jim, here in the middle, and then all the way back to the middle to Brian. Jim Noble, ESPN. Is there anything really magical or really cool about breaking that 200 mile <laughs> per hour barrier? Some guys think so. Some guys mm, not so much. I think it's pretty cool. I mean, it's uh, the first run yesterday. This was the first time I'd been on the new surface. And the data screen on the in the car wasn't it, it wasn't working the mile per hour it was just reading sixty something the whole time or whatever. So I made my first run, came in, went out for the second run. I looked up there halfway down the front straightaway. It said two oh six, two oh seven. I thought, man, these things all messed up. <laughs> you know, I didn't realize it, it was a little bit of a shock to realize we were going that fast. I I'd, I've never looked up at the screen and seen two hundred miles per hour when you get onto the straightaway, and that. You know that to me is uh, that's that's really fast. It doesn't feel that fast. I asked somebody. I said they did this repave. I they didn't have to make the track smaller though. I said, what do you mean? And I said, well, the track just feels smaller. You're going so fast, it feels like a smaller racetrack. It doesn't feel like a two-mile racetrack. And um, but yeah, it's just amazing how fast we're going. I, I um, to me that's kind of uncharted territory to be going down the corner that fast. Back to the back there, Brian, and then to Patrick. Brian Nelson, Motor Racing Network. Carl, uh, as Rush Fenway Racing celebrates its 25th anniversary this year, and certainly Jack and, and Rush Fenway have had a lot of success here at MIS as well, 
How would you describe the importance in, in contributing to the success of the teams uh, of having such backing from Ford Motor Company, the involvement there? Uh, I mean, Ford, they, they've been a great partner to me personally. They've, they've done a lot for me. I've learned a lot from, uh, from our relationship. I think being there right beside them through the, uh, the downturn a few years ago and seeing how they dealt with that, I, I mean, that was, that, was, uh, that was pretty amazing. That was a humbling experience to see that, and to, uh, it was very educational. I don't think of myself at this point in my career as having contributed very much to Roush Fenway Racing. I feel like Roush Fenway has done a lot for me, and I'm grateful for, you know, t grateful for uh, all the work that everyone's done, Jack and Mark Martin and Jeff Burton and, and um, you know, all the guys, uh, Greg and Matt and Kurt, and everybody who's, who's built this, this, uh, this organization. And if, um, you know, right now <coughs> we're kind of the – we're the slow car on the team, and we're 11th in points. And I, it's pretty neat to be, uh, to be associated with this this group right now. We're really we're, we're fast, and we have shot to win almost every week. And I feel like we're going to be a force in this championship. So that, you know, it's it's a good time to be a part of Rush Fenway Racing. Let's come down here to Bob. Raise your hand here, Bob. I'm sorry, Patrick's got it, and then Bob. Patrick Levy, NASCAR Productions. Um, Carl, next week we go to Sonoma. I uh, just wanted to know your thoughts on Sonoma and whether or not you look forward to a road coaster racing compared to Ovals. Yeah, Sonoma is one of the most fun tracks we go to. It's real slippery, and uh, and obviously, I mean, it's it's so much different than what most of us grew up racing. It's uh, it's a huge challenge. So to me, it's one of the ones the, the tracks I look forward to the most. We've had really good races, we've had bad races, and um, but it's it's a challenge. I mean, it, it's so neat to drive a stock car like that with all that horsepower um you know and you're shifting gears and jumping off curbs and locking up the tires and i mean it's a there's a lot of driving going on it's a very physical race and usually it's really hot out there and it's it's pretty grueling and it's a, a good run there really to me is special it's it says a lot about um not just the car and the team and everything but it's a there's a lot of pride as a driver to to run well because it is so much work Go ahead, Bob, and then to Lee. Uh, Bob Pockris, Sporting News. Um, as far as the tires go, I mean, there's only three guys in that first session today went more than 10 consecutive laps. And yeah. I'm curious, will you know more about them once you run, yeah. you know, a 10-lap run or a 20-lap run? Or do you, do you have a good feel for them with kind of just doing two, three, four, five-lap runs? How many guys had trouble? I mean, was it, was it – like was it everybody who ran a long run had trouble, or were there just a few people? Or I've heard about four or five guys Damn, that so that I've heard have had trouble, and so definitely not definitely not the majority, but certainly enough to raise some eyebrows. So I'd be nervous. I am nervous now that you tell me that, but um, I mean we're just we're <laughs> I don't know how to explain it to you guys that the cars are going so fast and they're making so much grip. I just it's hard to. Uh, Imagine the little area about the size of this plate right here, this little placard. I mean, there's four little spots like that that are making all that friction, and uh, and somehow the, the Goodyear has to make that work and drive well and keep everybody happy and not not have trouble. I, I mean, that's that's a lot of force out there. So I'm sure that NASCAR will look at it. I'm sure Goodyear will look at it. Uh, it'll be something I go right now and talk to Bob about. We'll make sure we keep track of it. We'll try to do a long run. And, and then we'll watch those nationwide cars because they make a ton of force in the corners, a bunch of downforce and, and side force in the corners. And um, so they'll put a lot of load on the tires as well. So it'll be something we all watch. But we, we can probably adjust the cars, you know, watch what goes on, see who's the weakest link. You know, you don't want to be the first guy to blow a tire. But if one guy blows a tire and now everybody's on, you know, on guard, you know what, what you got to watch for. And, and it'll be uh, just adds another variable to the race. But worst case, it seems like it'll still be okay. The cars, it's, we haven't had any trouble with the 10-lap runs we've made. Lee? Lee Spencer, Fox Sports. Where you are on the bubble right now as far as being just out of the chase zone, are you more concerned with getting enough points to get into the top 10 or winning races? I think it's 50-50 it's right now. I think the safest thing we can do is just win races. I mean, we talked about that in the garage the other day. Um, I think that's the best move, just go out and try to win. Now, maybe five races to go, we might, if we still haven't won one and we're on the bubble, which I don't plan on being, plan on being way up there, um, 
then we might go, man, look, we got to focus on these points. But I think all my guys, myself, we all feel like we need to, if there is a shot to go win it, we need to go win the race. That's, that's what we need to do. Cause that's, that's a much, I think right now it's a safer play to go do that. That's like insurance, you know, than, uh, than to run easy and, and hope for the most points. Cause if you get a, you know, the luck we've had, I mean, Denny ran into me the first lap last week, the tire at Dover, things like that. That stuff can happen in an instant. And you can't, you know, points can go away quickly. Wins are good. Yeah. That's a good question. He said that? Huh. Um, yeah, I, I guess I don't think of it in, in those type of terms. Um, to me, each week is kind of a new race. I don't know if that's that's how my whole team sees it or not, but I always think of it like, I mean, I can be really, really frustrated on Sunday, but I work really hard to be back at the racetrack with my game face ready to rock. You know, let's like be fast. Don't don't think about last week. I try to do that every every week. I just said ready to rock. Um, I thought that was funny, but, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know that, I don't know. I guess that's pretty deep thought to think, Hey, you know, we want to make sure not to, I mean, that's a, that's a pretty interesting way to look at what's going on and to think of your team. And I, I maybe that's smart. Maybe they're doing the right thing. You know, you don't want to shock the system so that you've got all your confidence when it's time to go. That's, that's interesting. No, I don't, but uh, Dean, you mean? Yeah. I'll say if Bob gets in the sports psychology business, we're in trouble. No. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's that. I don't know if it's good to think that deep for me. It's not to, to you know, because then you start weighing all these things and then you get all messed up. So I just try to do the best we can each week, regroup if it doesn't go well, but we try not to carry baggage. That's that's tough. Back to Patrick in the middle. Um, Carl, um, also looking ahead to Kentucky. Um, it's two weeks out, but you had a uh, top five there last season. Could you just talk about Kentucky and maybe capitalizing on that? Yeah, that race is pretty huge for us. Um, we uh, It's it's right there at uh, Best Buy's uh, near their headquarters. So we're going to do some stuff with the Geek Squad there, which will be pretty fun. And then UPS is uh, it's a UPS race for us. And it's our only UPS race, as far as I'm, as far as I know, this year. So it's a it's a big race for us. I've had my first win in NASCAR, was there in the Truck Series. It's that's huge for me um, to be able to go back there and to have an opportunity to run in the in the Cup Series and get a win there. We had some nationwide wins. It might just be one, but um, feels like we won two. And I, I really like that place. It's got character. The fans are wound up. I mean, it's just it's fun. Other questions for Carl, Bob, and then Marty. Uh, Bob Parker, Sporting News. You were talking about your teammates earlier. Matt Kenseth leads the points. Um, knowing his penchant for uh, consistency, I mean, does that make you look at him as a, already as a championship uh, contender? I think until Martinsville last year, Matt was he was our biggest concern uh, for the championship, and I think he, everybody in the garage knows that he's uh, he's a very tough competitor and. He doesn't make a lot of mistakes, so I'd say anytime he's got a chance to win, everyone else, including myself, is we we look at him as a as a threat. I mean, he's he's very very good. He seems like he's worked on the weaknesses that he and his team have had lately. You know, they qualify really well. He's he's really aggressive when he needs to be. I mean, he just seems like he's really really good right now. <laughs> 